The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cube at Hadoop Summit. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, my next guest is Ankar Gupta, head of sales and marketing at Metascale. Ankar, you've been on before. Welcome back to the Cube. Thank you, Jeff. Happy so, to be here. For, for our audience that's not familiar, familiar with Metascale, why don't we just start with a, you know, let's kind of level set. Tell us a little bit about the company, spun out of Sears, kind of leveraging some of the uh, big data skills and uh, knowledge you built up there. Tell us a little bit about the company and kind of uh, the, the business model. Certainly, so Metascale is a, was born out of Sears, uh, born out of a very large enterprise where mm -hmm. Sears started on its big data journey mm -hmm. several years ago. Mm -hmm. And what we have seen that there is a need for a strategic partner like Metascale in the big data space that's growing with the number of vendors that are out there because uh, while there are a lot of vendors who are providing different kind of services, analytics, infrastructure, big data as a service, mm -hmm. platform, cluster, mm -hmm. everything, but uh, because the technology is so new, you're looking for a trusted advisor who's done it in a large enterprise. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to do a couple of POC, fire up a few clusters and you know, try a few use cases, but when you actually implement in a large enterprise, you run into pain points that you have not experienced even thought through before. Mm -hmm. And that's where someone like us come, come in. There we would, because we have done it in a large enterprise, we were born out of a large enterprise. We have, we have gone through these mistakes, pain points, mm -hmm. decision trees and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can uh, you know, plan for it well in advance and make sure that you don't have to go through it. So, mm -hmm. Metascale as, uh, as, an, as, as a big data company of a large enterprise helps other companies accelerate their big data journey. Mm -hmm. So they don't through the, go through the same point, point that we did in our parent organization and they can seamlessly uh, have a long, long term strategy for big data while gaining results quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's who we are. So when we talk about big data, you're talking about, among other things, Hadoop uh, and some of the related technologies. So I know you guys had an announcement that seemed pretty interesting. Tell me about this, it's a, uh, a big data service. So kind of explain kind of the new offering and how it fits into, uh, how, how, it, how it would be consumed by, by an enterprise customer. Absolutely, so one of our main offerings is uh, big data as a service, actually managed services, where we provide complete end-to-end -end infrastructure. So an enterprise doesn't have to think about what distribution to use, what kind of reference architecture to use when you're looking for uh, big data implementation. Mm -hmm. We provide Metascale uh, appliances that we announced a couple of months ago that's ready to go plug and play. We actually move your data from your data warehouse into the appliance and help and see you have you focus on the business side of it where we take care of the infrastructure, we manage it 24 by seven, either remotely or on, on premise. Uh, what we realize that a lot of companies, especially on the business side, uh, companies that are, say, marketing organization or finance organization, they don't care what is underlying infrastructure. They mm -hmm. want the results. They want that analytics report quickly so they can make business decisions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies that we run into, either because of a large company bureaucracy or you know not having enough funds or, or whatever the reason may be, uh, their big data implementation may be taking some longer than, than, than that was expected. So we announced big data as a service uh, at this conference where if you as a company is looking to get end results, if you're looking for the report, whether it could be social media analytics or sentiment analytics mm -hmm. of customers about your brand or your products, you can get that report from us directly. So we will use our infrastructure, our clusters, our um, Hadoop infrastructure, mm -hmm. and then we will use our re resources to do that custom development for you and provide you the end report that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So the, again, you don't need to worry about setting up the infrastructure uh, yep. or, you know, uh, worrying about hiring resources to do coding or anything of mm -hmm. that nature, we will take care of all that and provide you the end results. Yeah, you don't have to worry about you know waking up at 3 a.m. in cold <laughs> sweats because your cluster <laughs> failed and uh, something went down. That's something, you, you just kind of abstract, abstract away all that complexity yep. and let your, your clients focus on their business. Absolutely, well, the 3 a.m. you will never have to worry about to work with us because we will be managing the infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, <you'll, but laughs> you, you might be up at 3 a.m., but they won't be, your clients of will, you'll give them some course. peace of mind. So, something you mentioned there, uh, talking about the, uh, the on-premise model mm -hmm. was that you know, you'll help you help your clients you know take data out of their data warehouse and move it into uh, into the cluster, uh, which touches on you know the bigger question that we've been talking about all day here and yesterday as well, uh, and, and in some of the sessions as well mm -hmm. about the relationship between Hadoop and the data warehouse. Now there's you know 88 plus vendors here, mm -hmm. and some of them have, have a very vested interest in in the data warehouse market, of course. understandably. So we hear a lot about a complementary approach and, and that Hadoop is not going to replace the data warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard a few contrary voice, uh, voices on that, but for the most part, 
it's being positioned as, as very complimentary. Mm -hmm. You're out in the field, what are you seeing uh, in reality on the ground? How are people uh, looking at Hadoop as it relates to their data warehouse? Well, I mean, similar to what you just said. By the way, great session this morning with uh, with uh, with two very interesting organizations together. Yes, thank you very so. much. That was a, that was a fun. I think you managed it well with uh, with, with the two competing organizations. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, then that was a that was a fun session to do with uh, Arun Murthy from HortonWorks and Doug Cutting from uh, Cloudera, two of the you know critical critical players in this. Certainly, market. certainly. And I think if you ask those guys, they will say that Hadoop will replace the data warehouse. But what we are seeing in the field really is it's, it is a complementary system. Mm -hmm. So a lot of organization, including our parent organization, what we have used, we've used Hadoop for all batch processing, so kind of warm to cold data. Mm -hmm. But then for all your hot data, for all your say RDBMS processing or your um, uh, quick 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 processing, you're mm -hmm. still using the existing EDW that you may mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. But Hadoop has fit really well with this ecosystem if you design, uh, if you design the data warehousing really well, mm -hmm. uh, or, or design, or, or uh, you know, account for Hadoop infrastructure uh, with long-term goals in mind. So, what we have seen, again, in, in the field, a lot of organizations, they started using Hadoop for as uh, rudimentary use cases as, just for storage device, move all my log files or Outlook PST files even, to Hadoop first, but now from there, they're now talking about can I use Hadoop in uh, along with you know something uh, another NoSQL database like Cassandra, HBase, or mm -hmm. MongoDB or something like that, and do more real-time processing mm -hmm. and whatnot. So um, I I don't think that organizations that have already invested in EDW are going to throw everything out and say <laughs> you know let's replace it all with right. Hadoop. That doesn't seem practical. It may happen a couple of years from today when mm -hmm. you know they're out of the contract and. I doubt though that they're, they're going to take everything out and I mean, large organizations don't make this. It's in fact, they're taking too long to have that Hadoop infrastructure come into their existing you know, data warehouse mm -hmm. set up today. So uh, really, I mean, practically speaking, we don't see Hadoop replacing all of what organizations have today, even if it is capable of, it may be capable of mm -hmm. today. Uh, but what we do see is Hadoop becoming a really good complementary system. Um, the other thing is, organization do not need, need to spend a lot of money in expensive EDW systems anymore. So instead of you know, growing their investment in whatever boxes they may be using, they could use Hadoop for a lot of you know, backup storage or archival mechanism, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, and then as I said, for batch jobs and, and cold data for the most part. Mm -hmm. Well that, you touched on something, it'll, it'll be interesting as this market progresses, what the impact will be on the EDW vendors. Um, you know, I agree, I don't think it's going to replace the EDW, mm -hmm. but I think you're going to see revenue start to stagnate potentially at some of the data warehouse vendors, um, and it'll be interesting to see how they kind of uh, adapt to this new Certainly. paradigm because it's a really different approach. I mean, uh, from a cost perspective, from um, the way you process the data, so um, uh, that'll be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. um, so another big trend here, of course, is SQL on Hadoop. We keep hearing about this, um, you know, from uh, an any number of vendors uh, who kind of have their own approach to this, and it can get a little confusing for customers. Um, how does Metascale approach that? You're getting a lot of requests from your clients for those types of capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thought on, you know, is SQL the best way to start to interact with data in Hadoop? Um, what's, your, what's your take? Yeah, so um, it's interesting, while a lot of organizations are taking time to adopt Hadoop, the organizations that have adopted Hadoop or our existing clients are asking for more. And one of the new asks, or the ask, um, is now NoSQL. So mm. our clients are looking for more real-time type of processing and looking for databases such as, as I said, Cassandra, NoSQL, mm -hmm. uh, MongoDBs of the world. Um, truly think that NoSQL is becoming more and more mainstream. The challenge is though NoSQL is not pretty today. Mm. It's uh, your existing DBAs who have, I, I have DBAs on my team who are 20 plus experience uh, on managing relational databases and for those DBAs to move to NoSQL wasn't an easy task. They will learn over time but it will be hard for them to, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the relational databases that they've been used to, yeah. to move to NoSQL certainly. So, um, but clearly uh, NoSQL is, seems like picking up more and more just because our data is more, you know, uns more and more unstructured data. You're mm -hmm. seeing more video file analytics, you're seeing more um, uh, audio files, such as your customer call data and whatnot, mm -hmm. semi-structured data. So, and NoSQL seem to process that data, mm -hmm. you know, much better. So, uh, clearly NoSQL is, uh, is, is becoming more in stream, but I think uh, I could see uh, tools that move data from, say, your RDBMS to NoSQL, mm -hmm. or data from RDBMS to Hadoop. Mm -hmm. I think um, generally people say it's SQL to NoSQL, but 
I guess it's primarily RDBMS as to Hadoop is, mm. is right. what, the, what the main term is. Well, that's interesting. So you've got, so you're seeing NoSQL. Uh, what's the style of deployments you're seeing? Are you seeing um, Cassandra being deployed uh, basically inside Hadoop, or mm -hmm. are you seeing kind of side by side? What are some of the deployment models, and what are some of the use cases where they're bringing in something like Cassandra or MongoDB alongside Hadoop? Yeah, so for a customer, um, for one of our customers on retail side, we actually just put their uh, real-time inventory system using Cassandra, and we chose Cassandra because the implementation was, the design for the implementation was, was done a couple of months ago, and HPS wasn't as strong as that time as it has come, now, mm -hmm. or it has come a long way, and as strong as it is today. Mm -hmm. So um, what we are seeing is Cassandra, for that particular use case, Cassandra is a standalone system, it's an own, it's a, it is its own cluster, so mm -hmm. uh, what we did was use Cassandra, uh, took data from the POS system, and used Storm Kafka combination to, to move data in real time mm -hmm. from POS to Cassandra, and then from Cassandra to Hadoop to use Hadoop as an enterprise data warehouse. Mm. But we put analytics on top of Cassandra, so uh, one of the analytics uh, engines, uh, whichever one you want to use, there are tons, as you said, 80 plus vendors, a lot of them uh, provide analytics. Put it directly on top of Cassandra and did uh, once the data is in Cassandra, you can you can do whatever BI you want. Oh, okay. So you're re you're doing some kind of operational reporting right on top of Cassandra. Right on top of Cassandra. You're also moving the data into Hadoop. So if you want to combine that with other sources and do some more you know historical type analysis and things like exactly. that. Exactly. So we we built. Uh, so what we did for this client was we uh, we had used Hadoop, uh, moved data from uh, Teradata boxes to Hadoop, mm -hmm. and built Hadoop as an enterprise data warehouse for them. Mm -hmm. So you had single source of uh, truth for that data, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we. For real time, we move data into Cassandra, but then from Cassandra, again, put all the data in Hadoop, so like you said, do all the historical analysis and whatnot, mm -hmm. as you want, and store the data in Hadoop. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's really, like I said, it, it's really interesting the uh, the deployment models we're seeing and some of the use cases. Um, and you know, it, it, it mirrors, in a way, some of the more traditional ways we did we, we we worked in the in the old world, if you will. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, with the with the transactional database in your you know analytic data warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, but now the scale is so much bigger. Uh, the types of data you can incorporate and the speed. I mean, it's got to be it's got to be real time. I mean, it's pretty much a requirement Absolutely. these days. Um, and I mean, if we if we were talking three years ago about Hadoop being real time, you would would have been laughed at. But we're seeing it now, where people are building real time systems. Uh, I mean, what's your take on just Hadoop specifically on 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 how quickly it's it's uh, developed, and, and what do you attribute that to? Is it the community, is it the vendors, is it a combination of the two? Yeah, so I, I truly believe that Hadoop is not a breakthrough concept. I mean, distributed file system and parallel processing has been there all along, but I think what made it really successful is one, cost, cost is a major player, mm -hmm. but then open source community. I think it's, uh, uh, what has been done on top of Hadoop is phenomenal, and how, like Duck Cutting said this morning, that he never expected this to be, Hadoop to become this big. And I believe the part of reason is, if it wasn't open source, I personally do not mm -hmm. think it would have as big as it is mm -hmm. today. And there's more and more development happening. So certainly, uh, that's one big reason. Um, uh, you talked about real time, certainly. I mean, uh, in fact, at our booth here at, uh, uh, at Metascale booth, what we are demonstrating is real time analytics um, on Twitter data, sentiment analytics on social media mm -hmm. in real time. So you can actually go, you can, uh, we have put a single node cluster, uh, local cluster, Hadoop cluster here, in one of our laptops, and you can you can type the keyword you want. We in real time we are pulling data mm -hmm. from Twitter and actually providing sentiment analysis using natural language processing mm -hmm. and whatnot uh, to you as you type the keyword and collecting the tweet. So it's it's phenomenal that how you can use a combination of you know Hadoop and one of the NoSQL databases. In our case, actually we're using MongoDB mm -hmm. uh, for this use case, but you could use, as I said you could use whatever NoSQL mm -hmm. you want. But certainly Hadoop has come a long way. In fact, um, we were the keynote, Metascale was keynote at Hadoop Summit two years ago, where we talked about some of the uh, use cases, and those use cases were primarily around batch processing. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, I was looking to the keynote this morning, and I was hearing that Analytics 3.0, and then your discussion with uh, Duck Cutting and Arun, Murthy, and uh, I was really thinking through two years ago when we talked about, it was cutting edge two years ago, what, what we discussed was about really batch processing <laughs> using Hadoop. Yeah. And now you're talking about analytics 3.0 and real-time processing, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Uh, certainly come, in, come come a long way, I believe. It is moving fast, and you know a lot of it, as you said, is due to the the community. So you know, mm -hmm. for our audience out there that isn't here at the show, describe the vibe here. What's what's your sense of um, kind of the vibe? I'll just quickly give you my take, and I think it's you know it's uh, definitely got that excitement 
to it, but there's also a sense, it's, it's a little, I, fi I find a little bit more serious tone this, this year than maybe in past years, and I think part of that is because we're talking about things about mm -hmm. enterprise grade capabilities like security and governance, mm -hmm. which maybe aren't as sexy as some of the, the analytics, but mm -hmm. critical to really make this an enterprise grade platform. What's, what's, the, what's the vibe from your perspective of the show? Uh, yes, yeah, so there are a couple of things. One, the food is great, so <laughs> everybody's That's always good at conferences. I know, right. Because it's a crap shoot with conferences. <laughs> you know, sometimes the food is just... When you, when you have a conference, such a large uh, uh, hall, you and people are walking a lot, <laughs> you want to make sure that they're fared well. But other than that, jokes apart, um, the key is, um, like you said, the tone is more serious. I guess in previous conferences, people were kind of testing the water. They're still testing the water, but in a more serious manner. They're here to talk about POCs, they're here to talk about use cases. Mm. I see a lot of large enterprises, more than what I saw before. It used to be more vendors or, or typically e-commerce web-based organization that were early adopters of Hadoop. Right. Now you're seeing more mainstream organizations that and multiple folks uh, from multiple departments within the same organization. So mm -hmm. it seems like the not only organization are looking to embrace these technologies, but multiple departments within the same organizations are, you know, so, so probably they have more, they have multiple use cases mm -hmm. or, or uh, you know, a long-term view, view on Hadoop and, and whatnot. So um, it's, it's exciting to see, it's exciting to see new development, exciting to see uh, traditional EDW vendors, you know, having their big boots here mm -hmm. with Hadoop uh, as part of their solution. So clearly, I guess, <laughs> they have realized that you know, there will be a part of it, be in or be out completely. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, all, the, all the big whales in the industry are here, and uh, yeah. you know, they're, some are taking a little, you know, they're taking different tacks in some cases, but they all realize, I think, that they need to be in this market. It's, are, it's the yeah. way of the future. I mean, it's either get in now, or you're going to be left behind, I think. Exactly, but you are the one who write about it, you are the expert in it. How are you feeling about the whole thing? Well, I think it's, it's, it's I think Hadoop, uh, is a channel is going to be a challenge for some of the larger vendors to to adopt. It's sort of you know it's sort of the innovator's dilemma mm -hmm. uh, problem, but I think um, you know part of it is the business model is different in this environment than a traditional mm -hmm. s software sale. So I think that's one challenge that uh, that the big players are going to have a little trouble adapting to. Um, I mean it's very different to sell. I think into uh, when you when you've got an open source community and when you're trying to also. I mean, we need to start moving kind of beyond some of the talks of speeds and fees and talk about business outcomes. And so you've got to talk to business people. And you've got to be able to talk their language. So mm -hmm. that's, I think, going to be a challenge as well. Um, you know, some of the vendors are doing a better job than others. Um, but long term, I mean, it's encouraging that they all know that they have to be in this mm -hmm. market. Um, you know, we'll see, it'll be really interesting in you know, five years, 10 years to see which ones were you know, in this for real and which ones were yeah. maybe not in it first. <laughs> or how many of these organizations will merge together? Well, that's true. I mean, well, there's 88 one. companies out here, and a lot of them are you know, relatively small startups. Right. And so that'll be interesting, too, to watch. You know, some of them are going to get snapped up. Uh, some of them will hopefully go on to be viable independent companies. Some of them will go away. I mean, that's just the, the nature of a, a fast-moving, uh, emerging market. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's what makes it fun to cover as an analyst as well. Yeah. So. Well, we'd like to read it on Wikibon. So You'll read it on Wikibon. <laughs> and a quick pitch for we're going we're to be doing a webinar together uh, coming up. We haven't set the date yet, but stay tuned for that and keep keep an eye out for that. We'll promote that and let you know where you can yeah. see that. And Sounds good. Uh, no, look looking forward to it. I mean, uh, Wikibon is a trusted research area, and we're really uh, proud to have you as a partner in. Uh, research webinar where we could provide an enterprise perspective and mm -hmm. you provide what you're seeing in the industry. So certainly uh, invite everybody to be a part of that research and you can see the details on Wikibon yeah, well, website or Metascale website. Yeah, when we nail down those details, we will certainly get them to you, to our community. So, Anchor, thanks so much for coming back on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Wrapping up day two here at Hadoop Summit. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Thank you, Jeff.